change for once in my life. It's gonna feel real good, gonna make a difference, gonna make it right. As I turn up the collar on my favorite winter coat, this wind I want to welcome you to worship at Holy Spirit Lutheran Church. My name is Frank Wagner and I'm one of the pastors here and we're very glad that you're able to join with us. I've got three announcements for you this morning. His Kids Ministry, which many of you know as Sunday School Ministry. It is ministry for our infants through fifth grade. That is officially being launched today. Uh, this ministry is all about teaching our children, educating our children, loving on our children in those age groups so that they will come to know of Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and that they will know what it's like to live with him. That ministry takes place on Sunday mornings here at 930. And if you would like to participate in that ministry, please get in touch with Diana Cosgrave, who is our staff member overseeing that ministry. You can simply contact the church office 
and we will be in touch with you. Uh, the second announcement is with regards to the earthquake that took place in Haiti and how you might be able to respond. A number of you have been asking, and so we want to share with you that, of course, there are many opportunities that are being offered in our community, perhaps through your workplace and many other excellent organizations. So certainly you can check those out. Helping Haiti is the most important thing here. If it's something that you want to do through our church, then you can simply contact the church and we will direct you on how you can help through the ministry that we are engaged in called the Village of Hope. The Village of Hope has a school and a clinic over in Haiti, and they know every day what is needed and how best to respond. So if that's something that you would be interested in, please contact the office and you can give through the Village of Hope ministry to their emergency fund. The last announcement is we would invite you to pray for our church council. They have received the name of a candidate for our associate pastor position here at Holy Spirit that we are in the process of filling. The call committee has vetted this person. They are very excited about him. Now this name has been given to the church council and over the next few weeks, they will be interviewing this candidate. So we ask you to pray for wisdom and discernment so that we will make the right decision for Holy Spirit Lutheran Church and that our candidate will make the best decision for his life as well. So exciting things happening here in our church. Go to our website and see all that's going on. We want to invite you to participate. We love this church and we think you would love it too. Let's begin worship.
This weekend kicks off our His Kids Ministry at Holy Spirit Lutheran Church. We want to give thanks to all of our teachers that work with our little disciples every Sunday. Your leadership helps build the foundation of Christ in their lives. We also want to recognize our other ministry leaders for giving their time and talents for our community. We love you and couldn't do it without you. Thank you. Today we are excited that our His Kids Ministry, which some of you know as Sunday School, is being launched. This uh, ministry is for our infants through fifth grade, and they will be offering age-appropriate uh, teaching for our children Sunday mornings at 9.30 over in the Learning Center. And we are very grateful to Diana Cosgrave and all of our teachers uh, who are involved in that ministry. And really wanna talk bigger picture beyond his kids, and that is as we have a soul fire ministry, we have confirmation ministry um, as well for our young people. And again, that is heavily dependent upon volunteer teachers and mentors. And then if you expand beyond that, we have small groups that are led by many lay people who are teaching uh, Bible classes as well as life application uh, classes. So we are grateful to the power and the influence and the activity that all of our lay people offer when it comes to being able to educate children and adults on what our faith is all about and how to apply faith to daily living. Then you can expand even beyond that and look at all of the various ministries that we have here in the church. Most of them, again, are uh, being led by lay people, not people who are on staff. And these are people who, again, feel God's call in their life to be able to share their faith in a leadership teaching kind of way. So a big thank you to all the people of Holy Spirit Lutheran Church who have made themselves available to lead in ministry, to lead in teaching. God bless you all. The reading today is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 through 21. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us this ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This ends the reading. Good morning. I'm Pastor Jim Grazer, one of the pastors here, and please pray with me. Gracious God, we are thankful that you have created us in your image and that your design for us is something that we're not always clear on. We'd ask that you would come and hover over us now as we enter into time to consider how it is you have made us, how it is you see us, and how we can live into that expectation for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's part three of a sermon series about lies we tell ourselves. Today's topic, today's lie, is about image. And maybe more specifically, the lie that God made a mistake in how God made me. You know, we look in the mirror and we think our nose is too big or we'd have preferred blue eyes. I wish I was thinner. I wish I wasn't so skinny. Or maybe the lie that looks like something deeper. I wish I was smarter. Or I wish I had been born with at least one talent. Or in our hardest moments, maybe you've considered the lie Maybe I shouldn't have even been born. I'm so unhappy with life. What's the point? Have you ever wondered if you were who God intended you to be, or did God make a mistake putting you together? We've talked before about all the messages we receive that reinforce the lie. 
you won't be complete until you own this particular car. You'll finally be satisfied with how you look if you just do this diet or this workout. If you just get this product, you'll finally be happy. All of those marketing messages play off the lie that I'm not right as I am. And we consumers gobble it up. And there is another way we tell this lie to ourselves. We tell it by way of guilt. When we look in the mirror, what we see is our flawed pasts, our mistakes. Some of them repeated again and again. We see our failings. We see our brokenness. I'm just a big mistake in God's eyes. I have great news for you today. Listen to what Paul writes in his second letter to the church at Corinth. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. From now on. From now on, those who are in Christ are a new creation. You and I are new creations. That's important to be reminded of. Because if you are typical of most humans, you are always aware of your flaws, except for the most narcissistic among us who love every part of themselves. But the majority of us know our own flaws. We know the places and times when we fail, and we fail often. We are aware of our own misdeeds and missteps, and chances are there may be still some wrong you've committed that to this day you are still unable to forgive yourself for. You are still carrying a burden of guilt for something, and it haunts you. Paul knows this is true about ourselves even as he writes this. In his letter he wrote to the church at Rome, he confesses this feeling of being trapped in his own sin. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if what I do what I do not want, it is no longer that I do it, but sin that dwells within me. Paul knows that he, nor you and I, are perfect. Paul knows we are sinful creatures. And Paul knows that just because we're baptized, it doesn't mean that we no longer sin. It doesn't mean that we all of a sudden become perfected. But he does know that something new has begun in us. We are no longer that trapped sinner. Something has begun. It won't be completed until we join Jesus in heaven, but still, even now, something new has started. And sometimes, it's hard for us to catch up to that newness. We remain stuck in our pasts. We remain slave to our flaws. We remain waiting, but not sure waiting for what. And there are those occasions when we confuse the broken, sinful parts of ourselves with what God intended. God just made me angrier than other people. That's a lie, too. God just made me with a more active sex drive than other people. That's why I can't help but have affairs. That's a lie. Sometimes we just don't realize there's a better way God intended for us. We don't know why we need to be remade something new. That's the basics of our Christian faith. Genesis tells us God made us, and God made us good, very good, in fact. But then sin entered the world. Chaos interrupted God's good order. We are born children of a fallen humanity, as the old liturgy used to say. And this is why we need to be recreated, become new creations. And this isn't something that happens on our own. We can never find a new product good enough to make us a new creation. This is what Jesus did. 
Jesus' work on the cross is what makes us new. And when we begin to live as Jesus did, when we begin living Jesus' way, we are reborn as new creations. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. You are in Christ. You are a new creation. Is that what you see when you now look in the mirror? Have you shed the old way? The anger, the jealousy, the greed, the lust, the guilt, the shame? Are you seeing the new fruit, as Pastor Frank talked about last week? The patience, the self-control, the kindness, the gentleness. Is it God who was mistaken, or was it you who has been mistaken? What do you see? I want to show you something from several years ago. Over 15 years ago, the makers of Dove, the soap and lotion people, began their Real Beauty campaign. It still continues to this day. Whereas it's addressing the issues particularly of how women think about their own beauty, I think it speaks something to all of us about how we think about our newness in Christ. People of God, men, women, girls, and boys, you are a new creation. You are more beautiful than you think. You're not perfect yet, but that sin that haunts you, those mistakes you wish you could undo, those failures that you've let define you, those things are not you. You are a new creation. Christ is in you now. And chances are that the Christ in you is the thing people see. They don't even see those new wrinkles around your aging eyes. At least, the Christ in us is what we are supposed to see in each other. We get together each week and we admit our sins from the week. And we get that out of the way because we are being recreated new, again, week after week, day after day. God is at work in you and in me. And God expects us to stop waiting to forgive ourselves and each other. Stop dwelling on what we think doesn't measure up. We are something new. You see, Jesus approaches us with something we have a hard time approaching ourselves with and approaching others with. He approaches us with love. And his eye is not as harsh as ours. He measures beauty differently. There's a book titled In a Dark Wood, Journeys of Faith and Doubt. In it, a man has a dream that he is dead and watching himself. He sees himself going to the foot of a mountain where he's lifted up. He knows he is going to his judgment and he is afraid. He imagines a cloud of witnesses awaiting him and he thinks, this is it, I'm going to be judged. They're all going to be there and they're going to see everything that I've done. But when he arrives, there's just Jesus. Jesus looks like a monk with a cowl over his head but there is a light behind him so the man can't see his face. And all Jesus does is give him a huge hug. Jesus says, you silly man, why are you so worried? Did you think I didn't love you? I do love you. Nothing matters. You'll do just as you are. And the man wakes up and nothing bothers him the way it used to. Mark Twain said, heaven goes by favor. If it went by merit, you would stay out and your dog would go in. Thank God. I bet Jesus sees you differently than you do. He sees you as something new he created in baptism, someone he loves, someone he was willing to give his life for. You may have failed a time or two this week, but Jesus isn't dwelling on it. 
Why should you? There's a story about John Duncan, who long ago taught Hebrew at New College in Edinburgh, Scotland. One Sunday, as he knelt at the Lord's Supper in church, Duncan felt so depressed that when the elements came to him, he couldn't take them. He allowed the bread and wine to pass. As he was kneeling there feeling absolutely miserable, he noticed a girl in the congregation whom, when the bread and wine came to her, she too allowed them to pass, and she began to cry. That sight shook the old saint, and in a whisper that could be heard across the church, he said, Take it, lassie, take it. It's meant for people like you and me. Then Duncan himself took the sacrament. Jesus knows you and I aren't perfect. He knows our flaws probably better than we ourselves do. But he always sees us through the lens of grace and mercy and love. That's why the sacrament is for people like you and me. It's the stuff of forgiveness. And the picture he sees with us is of his beautiful child and a sinner forgiven. Seminary professor and Christian author C.S. Lewis wrote, I think that if God forgives us, we must forgive ourselves. Otherwise, it is almost like setting up ourselves as a higher tribunal than him. We can be our own worst judge. We can be far less forgiving and tolerant than God. People of God, you are new creations beautiful new creations. God has redeemed you. Sin has been washed away from the very good creation he made you. You've been remade. Forgive yourself. God does. Do you think God doesn't love you? Forgive yourself. Then, forgive others of whom you can often be just as critical. They, too, are new creations, flawed but beautiful, forgiven brothers and sisters in Christ, people God made and redeemed and remade. Be the people God sketched you and made you to be. Amen. Let us join together for our closing prayer. Father God, you are the creator of the universe and everything that you created came from you and you are a God of love, which means that what you created was created out of love and to be loved. And part of your miraculous creation are your people. And you said to us that we are the crown of your creation. You created us and you said that we were very good. And so that is what is the truth. That is our identity and our image. And yet we live in a society, we live in a world where our image, our self-image is under attack. Everything says to us, I could be better, I could do better, there are others that are better than us, and if we don't up our game, if we don't look better, then we are worth less. And as a result of that lie, we are feverishly, hectically, trying to improve ourselves to be something other than the beautiful self that we were created. God, that is sin that disturbs us so. It is sin that turns us away from you and against each other. And I would pray, Father, that today's message, today's word from you will influence each one of us to see the good that is there, to know that you love us the way that we are and to allow that to be our identity and that we think that way and that we treat other people that way as well. 
Father, we continue to lift up the people of Haiti. Every day, the death count climbs. Every day, they are finding more and more people who are injured. The desperation of the people of Haiti is so great. I pray, Lord, for your calm, your peace, your order to surround that nation. I pray for your healing hand to be upon those who are injured. I pray for your comfort to be with those who grieve lost loved ones. I pray, God, that you will continue to encourage and inspire the world to come to the aid of these people who have so little and who are struggling so much. Specifically, I want to lift up the ministry that we are engaged in, the Village of Hope. May they, because they were blessed to be spared, may they, Lord, be a blessing to those who have lost much. Help us, Lord, to know how we can be encouraging and supportive to the people of Haiti. Father, we also are aware of the great difficulty existing over in the nation of Afghanistan. They are going through a time when their government is being turned upside down, their leadership has massively changed, and no one really knows what's to come. But there is great fear and chaos there. And so once again, Lord, we pray that you will influence the leaders, that those leaders will see that these are loving people, your people. And we pray, Lord, that they will act with kindness towards each other. We pray, Lord, that you will help our nation and other nations of the world to stand strong, to come to the rescue of those who are being persecuted, that we will be able to get our own citizens out, that we will be able to protect those who helped us and were loyal to us, that we will be able to come to the rescue of those who are in danger with their lives. And we would also ask, Lord, that those who are most vulnerable, children and women, that they will be spared and that their freedoms and their rights will be protected. Lord, we pray for all those who are living out west and who are being threatened by fires as more and more fires uh, begin, start and spread. We would ask, Lord, that you protect the lives of the people and help those who have lost property to be able to rebuild. And then, Lord, we pray for those who are in the pathway of Hurricane Grace as it heads towards Mexico. Protect the lives there. Protect the property of the people. And for those who lose property to this storm, we ask that you would help them to rebuild. And then, Lord, we close with those in our congregation whose names have been shared with us who are very sick, who have suffered injury, and we ask for healing for them. We pray for Timothy, Nikki, Eleanor, Katie, Susan, Rick, Andrea, John, Melissa, Chloe, Bud, Carol, Nick, Joanne, Miriam, and Marcia. You know each one of these people, Lord. You love each one of them. And we trust that your will is perfect. And so we ask that your will be done in their lives and that you comfort them during this time of struggle. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Receive now the benediction. As you go your way, may God go with you. May God go before you to show you his way behind you to encourage you along that way, above you to watch over you and care for you, and beside you to be your very best friend. And may God always go within you to give you his peace and his joy. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Jesus.
Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sin. So oh.